The moon landing was one of the greatest achievements in the history of humanity. It was the first time we ever stepped foot on an alien world. It was one of the most watched events in human history, and over 400,000 people came together to make it happen. When the Apollo 11 astronauts returned, and the mission was a resounding success, people didn't say the United States did it. They said we did it. All of humanity put people on the moon. All this happened 55 years ago. The sixth and final moon landing, Apollo 17, was 52 years ago. We've sent tons of robotic spacecraft to the moon since, but no people. So why haven't we been back? How hard is it actually to just rebuild the Saturn V, get a crew, and put them back on the moon? The fact that we haven't sent humans to the moon in 50 years has been used by conspiracy theorists as evidence that we never went in the first place. If we can't figure out how to do it today, then how do we figure out how to do it in the 60s when technology was significantly worse? Many people have speculated about it. Some say we lost the technology and forgot how to do it. Some say we never went. In all my searching, I haven't found a single popular video explaining exactly how we got to the moon and why we haven't gotten back. So that's what I'm here to do. This video should hopefully serve as a clear explanation of exactly why we haven't gone back to the moon in 50 years. It's not because we forgot how to or lost the technology. It's not just because of politics. It's a lot more complicated than that. But first, we have to be on the same page. It's pointless to talk about going back when there are people who think we never went. So before I explain why we haven't gone back, I first need to talk about how we know for an absolute fact that the moon landings did occur. Plus, the moon landings being real is actually part of the reason why we haven't gone back, which I'll get to later. People who deny the moon landing are not stupid. It is perfectly normal to question what the government says, and it's probably a very good idea. A healthy dose of skepticism toward the government is more than justified. Luckily, there is loads of proof that the moon landing occurred from non-government sources, or governments other than the American one. First off, satellites from India, China, and Japan have all taken pictures of the Apollo landing sites, and confirmed that the landers, flags, experiments, and footprints are all there. China and the US in particular are enemies. China has no reason to help the US keep the truth behind the moon landing a secret. In fact, it would benefit China if they exposed that the moon landing was fake. But they didn't do that because they saw with their own satellites it was real. That alone confirms beyond a reasonable doubt it was real, but if you're not convinced, there's a ton more evidence as well. Japan's Kaguya satellite around the moon is different from the rest. Its goal was to make a 3D model of lunar terrain. Before they did that, we did not know what the moon's terrain looked like beyond knowing these areas were flat and those areas are rocky. Kaguya gave us maps of lunar terrain that we simply did not have before, and would have been impossible to get in the 60s and 70s. But the landing site of Apollo 15 matches Kaguya data perfectly. It looks exactly as it should. And as I just said, NASA would have no possible way of knowing what the terrain at Apollo 15 looked like before landing. So the fact that the Kaguya data and Apollo 15 pictures match up perfectly means that at the very least, Apollo 15 must have occurred. It's either that or NASA can predict the future. And one of the most interesting pieces of evidence for the moon landing is Soviet spies. During the Apollo program, there were hundreds of spies inside NASA itself. They were highly trained by the Soviet Union. They stole paperwork to listen in on conversations, all the normal spy stuff. If you know anything about how the USSR functioned, if these spies didn't do their job, they would be in for a bad time when they got home. So, there were hundreds of highly trained Soviet spies with their lives on the line inside NASA itself during the Apollo program. And none of them found even the slightest bit of evidence that the moon landing was going to be faked. All pieces of paperwork lined up. Nobody said a word about it being faked, in public or in private, during the whole program. Based on the information they gathered, a rocket capable of getting to the moon was actually built. A lander capable of landing on the moon was actually built. The astronauts were actually trained to land on the moon. If NASA did all this, then why would they just turn around and fake it? In fact, faking it would have been harder than just doing the landing in this case. Because we know for an absolute fact that NASA had the ability to get people to the moon because of spies. Doing all that and then faking it on top of it all would be so much harder than just using what they had to get to the moon. And if highly trained spies that would literally be sent to a gulag in Siberia if they didn't do their job couldn't find any evidence of the moon landing being faked, then I highly doubt random untrained people on the internet can. And finally, the moon landing broadcast itself. To get the broadcast to Earth, a very powerful radio signal was obviously needed. It was powerful enough, in fact, that if you had a radio receiver set up to the right frequency and pointing at the right direction, you could have picked up the broadcast yourself. And people did this. Thousands and thousands of average people all across the world, not affiliated with any world government, all with radio equipment, picked up the Apollo broadcast independently. There were people who heard the landings without even needing a TV. All they needed was a radio dish looking for the right thing. 
And they were all independently able to confirm, without the government being involved at all, that the signals came from the moon. So, at the absolute bare minimum, NASA landed something on the moon capable of broadcasting a signal. This, combined with Soviet spies not finding any evidence of the moon landing being faked, and pictures taken by enemies of the United States of the landers on the moon, we know without a shadow of a doubt that the moon landings were real and did occur. None of what I just said came from NASA or the US government. All of it was independently confirmed by other countries or random citizens with no affiliation with NASA. Then how did they get through the Van Allen belts? This is a major pillar of the moon landing being fake conspiracy. The Van Allen belts are a topic I will make a full video about, but people seem to assume that they are deadly and nobody can pass through them, and therefore the moon landing was fake. I'll go into way more depth in a later video, but all you need to know is that the Van Allen belts are not deadly. It isn't just a zone of impenetrable death around Earth. Yes, there's a lot of radiation, and it is dangerous, but it's only dangerous if you stay there for a while. If you're in and out quickly, you'll be perfectly fine. And the Apollo missions were in and out of the belts very quickly. Anyway, sorry that took so long, but I just wanted to make sure everyone here knows the moon landings did happen, because that's actually important for why we haven't gone back. If the original moon landings had been fake, then I have no doubt that there would have already been additional real moon landings by now. In short, the reason we haven't gone back is because of Apollo itself. If the Apollo program hadn't happened, I genuinely think we would have had a moon base by now. First off, we did not lose the ability to get to the moon. We didn't forget how to build a Saturn V, nor do we forget how to land on the moon. Yes, technically, we don't have the ability to build a Saturn V anymore, but we also don't have the ability to build TVs from the 60s or World War II era fighter planes, because they're obsolete and were replaced by better things. We don't have the ability to build a Saturn V because the Saturn V is outdated, incredibly dangerous, and we have much better rockets today. When people say we lost the technology to go to the moon, what they actually mean is we no longer have the technology that we used at the time to get to the moon because it was replaced by better things. We didn't lose the technology in the way people think. We simply don't need to make it anymore because we have better replacements. So, if we have better rockets, then why not just make an Apollo 2.0? Why not get a lander, get a rocket, and get people back on the moon? Because nobody in their right mind, even with modern technology, would ever do another Apollo. Because Apollo was needlessly reckless, enormously expensive, and completely unsustainable. It is an absolute miracle that none of the Apollo missions that got off the ground ended in death of the crew, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. We are incredibly lucky that Apollo 13 was the worst we got. Some estimates say that the Saturn V had a 1 in 10 chance of exploding on launch. Apollo 11 nearly failed to land when the ground was too rough, and nearly failed to lift off when the button on the control panel broke. Apollo 12 was struck by lightning twice. An Apollo mission ending in complete failure was not only possible, but decently likely. These safety margins would have been absolutely unacceptable today. If you walked into a NASA meeting today with the designs and safety margins of an Apollo mission, you would be laughed out of the room. No space agency would be willing to accept that high of a risk today. They only got away with it in the 60s because the US was in a race to get to the moon first, and NASA had a basically unlimited budget. So we already can't use the Saturn V because it was a death trap with a 10% chance of exploding. We would need a new moon rocket. But the problems don't end there. It's also good to remember that the Soviets did try to land people on the moon, but their Saturn V equivalent, the N1, never made a successful launch, and after Apollo, they just gave up. So, out of the two we have, 50% of crewed moon programs ended in failure. If you count individual missions, 14% of the seven Apollo moon landings failed, the failure of course being Apollo 13. Those are not good odds. Clearly, if we want people to go back to the moon, Apollo is not going to work. A 14% chance of failure per landing is completely unacceptable. And this is after we spent $257 billion making it happen. That brings me to my second point. Apollo was not only reckless and dangerous, but expensive. NASA's current budget is about $20 billion a year. To make another Apollo program, NASA would need 10 years worth of their budget. That means that to get enough money for Apollo, they'd have to spend zero dollars in 10 years. They can't pay anyone, can't launch any rockets, can't make any missions for a decade just to have enough money for Apollo. No sane person would allow something that expensive to happen today. Apollo got a pass because NASA had a gigantic budget back then, and again, we were in a space race. Today, the circumstances are different. We are currently in a space race with China, but it's nowhere near the intensity of the US-Soviet space race, and NASA has a fraction of its previous budget. We simply could not afford an Apollo program today, so we don't do it. 
But even if we had the money, even if we somehow fixed the enormous and glaring safety problems that by some grace of God didn't kill people on a moon landing mission already, even if everything was perfect, we still wouldn't do another Apollo. Because it's unsustainable. If we just kept going with Apollo's budget forever, continuously landing people on the moon, we would eventually run out of money. Because Apollo didn't make any money, it didn't make life better on Earth, it was solely for prestige and nothing else. There's no way to get around it. Apollo was a massive waste of money, and we had no business going to the moon in the 60s. There was no point in continuing Apollo and spending ludicrous amounts of money for no reason, so we stopped. Going to the moon in and of itself is not bad. Getting humans on the moon is actually a very good idea. I am not anti-space exploration, quite the opposite. I want humans on the moon. Apollo just did it really badly. So, when I say Apollo is a waste of money, I don't mean going to the moon is a waste of money, because it isn't. I mean the way we tried to do it already was a waste. Plus, once we beat the Soviets, the public just wasn't interested. Apollo had one goal and one goal only, beat the Soviet Union to the moon. Once that was accomplished, what was the point in keeping this money hole around any longer? Apollo was never going to try colonizing the moon. Colonizing the moon is an extremely good idea, and I talk about why in other videos, but that was never Apollo's goal. Their only goal was to get a man on the moon. That's it. No more, no less. The problems with Apollo went too deep, and the only way to fix them was to cancel it. And that's why we haven't been back. Nobody, not the US, not other countries, not companies, is willing to spend that ungodly amount of money for your few prestige missions with no payoff. We do want to go back to the moon, but we can't because if we did another Apollo, we would go bankrupt, potentially kill several people, and get no benefits from it. Several people died for Apollo, and we aren't willing to do that again. The payoff of Apollo, the prestige of being the first man on the moon, simply isn't there anymore. You'd be competing for second place. So, we've been working for decades to create a new way to get to the moon. Apollo proved getting humans to the moon was possible. It spent hundreds of billions of dollars and had 400,000 people working for it, and it still just barely worked. Now we need to prove that getting to the moon is practical, and we are trying to do that. The Artemis program had the goal of getting back to the moon sustainably, not wasting so much money just to nearly kill a bunch of astronauts and get nothing in return. Not only that, we're not just trying to put people back on the moon. We're trying to build a permanent base on the moon, like the International Space Station, where people can live for months. Artemis is not Apollo, and the only similarities between the two programs is that there are humans involved and they're going to the moon. None of the people who worked in Apollo are left, they're all either dead or retired. We're going to have to learn how to get to the moon again without the experience of people who already did it, and with brand new technology and entirely different mission goals. Because of this, it's been delayed. It's gone over budget and so parts of it were cancelled. Progress has been extremely slow. But progress is being made. Artemis 1, an uncrewed test of the SLS rocket and Orion crew spacecraft, has already occurred. Starship HLS, the lander we'll use to get back, is going well and will hopefully be ready by 2028. Artemis 2, a crewed version of Artemis 1, will likely launch next year and is actually currently ahead of schedule right now. China is also preparing to send their own crewed mission to the moon before 2030. We are going back, and we have been trying. It's just taking a while. And don't get me wrong, Apollo did amazing things, but no sane person would ever want to repeat it. Apollo was not a glorious, perfect victory. It was riddled with problems, and almost every aspect was a near disaster. We've tried to distance ourselves from Apollo as much as possible because of this. So, to put it simply, why haven't we been back to the moon? Because Apollo was reckless, dangerous, expensive, and unsustainable. Some people seem to think Apollo was easy, because it was done in less than a decade. It was not. Apollo killed people, almost killed several more, and spent way too much money than should have been allowed just for some prestige. And on top of that, it had a grand total of zero long-term goals. So, it was cancelled. We've now spent decades trying to learn from our mistakes and get back to the moon in a safer and more reliable way. And progress is being made, and we will be back there soon. Humans will most likely be back on the moon before 2030. So, if you've ever seen someone ask why we haven't been back to the moon, send them this video. That's why I made it to hopefully show people just how insane Apollo was, and exactly why it's taking so long to return. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about colonizing the moon, where I talk a lot about the ways we are trying to get back to the moon in a big way, and not just be the next Apollo, but to be the successor of Apollo.